My name is Heba Saleh. I am engineering manager here at Andela Egypt, and I have an agile specialization from the University of Virginia. Plank poker is a common practice across all agile estimation techniques. But is this the most suitable method for all products and projects? In this video, we will be talking about other useful agile estimation techniques beyond poker estimation. We are going to look at t-shirt sizes, dot voting, and the pocket system. Estimation is hard. For software developers, it's among the most difficult, if not the most difficult aspect of the job. Why planning and estimation are necessary? Planning and estimation is an important aspect of agile methodology. Every plan will set a platform to develop a project and estimation will be helpful to fill the gaps and remove obstacles in software development process. Estimates also set expectations. Agile estimation and planning is useful to understand the requirements and to make changes to develop the product in various formats through planning, realizing, and iterating the products. Many of Agile teams I know use some form of planning poker for their Agile estimation. But Agile estimation with planning poker sometimes just doesn't work. Some reasons for this could be the estimation features are too large, there is not enough detailed information available on the items to be estimated, or there is not enough time to be an accurate estimation on the full backlog. So, let's talk about how to pull all these ideas together into one estimation approach that works. I will start with Planning poker. In planning poker, each estimator should be everybody on the team holds a set of cards that contain numbers which the team has agreed to use as their estimates. Normally, this will be the modified Fibonacci sequence, but that's really up to the team. The product owner reads a product backlog item, usually a user story. The team and the product owner discuss the item and the team members ask questions, which the product owner clarifies. Expectation of this could be as short as a few seconds, but it can take as long as needed. Once each team member decided to open an estimate, they pull that card out to their hand, holding it so no one else can see it. And when everybody has picked the estimate, the cards are revealed at all at the same time, if everyone is holding up the same number, then we are done. And that number is written down as the estimate and we move on. But if the numbers are different, they are rediscussed and re-estimated again. Planning poker works well when you have to estimate a relatively small number of items in a small team, like five to eight people. T-shirt sizes. In t-shirt method, you will assign a value of each of your user stories using small, medium, or large size. How this works is, you sit around as a team and go through your user stories and place a value of either small, medium, or large. This is a perfect technique for estimating a huge backlog of relatively large items, especially when you have several concurrent Scrum teams working on the same product. The decision about the size is based on an open and mutual collaborative discussion. This method is an informal and quick way to get a rough feeling about the total size of your backlog. When you are faced with a relatively small set of items and in need of a super simple and effective technique to estimate, you can use the dot voting method. This method oriented from decision-making techniques and can be used for estimation. Each person get a small number of small stickers and can choose to vote for the individual items. The more the dots, the bigger the sizes. This technique works well in both small and large groups, 
but you have to limit the number of estimated items. The bucket system is a way to carry out an estimation of a larger number of items with a small to medium sized group of people and to do it quickly. This process is as follows. Lay out cards with labels 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 200 on a wall or a larger table. These are the pockets. Put enough space between them to accommodate all the items to be estimated. Choose one item at random from all the items, place it on the eighth pocket. This is an arbitrary reference point. If the item chosen is obviously at an extreme end of your scale, choose another item at random to replace it. Choose a second item at random from all the items, discuss the item, and as a group, estimate it relatively to the first item. For example, if it is estimate at half of the first item, then it would be placed on the fourth pocket. All participants should agree on the placement. It choose the third item to estimate at random from all the items. Discuss and place as in the previous step. Distribute the remaining items equally among participants. Participants then work independently through the items to estimate and place them in the appropriate pockets. If a participant feels unable to estimate an item, it can be passed along to someone else. The facilitator should make sure that passing along does not get bogged down in any discussion. Once all the items are placed, the participant do a sanity check to independently looking for items they know or care about and the check to see if they are in a good pocket. If a participant finds an item that doesn't seem to be in correct pocket, then that item is brought to the, the attention of the group to discuss. Note, the facilitator should ensure that not many items get discussed in details. When the sanity check is complete, items have their pocket number recorded in an appropriate spot. In this video, we introduced three other agile estimation techniques other than planning poker. The first was t-shirt sizes, which is a perfect technique for estimating a large backlog. The second was dot voting. If you have a small set of items and it needs a super simple and effective technique to estimate, you can use this method. And finally, we have the pocket system, which is a way to estimate a large number of items with a small to medium-sized group of people and to do it quickly. If you are interested in learning more about any of these agile estimation techniques, I have added some useful links in the description box below. Also, if you have any questions concerning this video, feel free to reach out to me via LinkedIn. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.